The advice to people who want to be the next Joe Rogan is to find out what is the next logical opportunity that is going to help you prepare for being the next Joe Rogan and just doing it and then not giving up on it and so then good. keep going with it. When you elevate the process like the way that you're doing it, you're going to be connecting with people that are you know, creating like real value yeah. and attention is going to follow that quality of the message, right? Mm -hmm. Is it good to people? Does it feel like quitting something that you have been doing before? I started to kind of realize that through that process of pivoting that people are not paying as much attention as you think. Elevating your authority is the name of the game in making money with a small audience. The key to monetizing a small audience is to Guys, welcome back to Content is Profit Special Edition from the Content is Profit Jungle. Uh, we are here with... It does look <laughs> like a jungle. It's pretty good, yeah. Yes, we're here with a special guest on a special setup. Fonsi, what's up, man? How you doing? Feeling good. We just had an incredible interview with uh, our guest that you cannot see because it's a surprise right now. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. We dive deep, introspective. Dove, dove. Dove deep, introspective, you know, Venezuelans. <laughs> Sometimes we make mistakes, but it's okay. Mistakes are part of your identity when you're creating yes. content. We talked about that, so you better check out her podcast here in a second when we tell you yes. whose podcast is it and what podcast it is. Absolutely. And uh, if you're wondering, why are you guys sitting on that couch all together, like nice brothers that you are? And if you're listening, go to youtube channel and check it out but we'll talk that in just a second because we want to welcome this person to the show she has been on the show before she runs an incredible business she came to town to interview some people and uh funny story she called me and said hey Luis, do you know anybody in jacksonville that has a studio and we're like wait we do my brother has one. I have one. What? And then we came to the studio podcast. So guys, please welcome. And she has the coolest accent. Oh, that's a coolest wow. Coolest of wow. all. Guys, please welcome our dear friend, Content is Profit Hall of Famer after this experience. Our dear, 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 dear Venezuelan mom <laughs> from Boston, <laughs> Ina Company. Let's go. Thank you, guys. I'm so welcome, excited Ina. to be here. We are in your beautiful studio that you set up for um, the interviews in person that I wanted to do. So thank you guys for creating the jungle for me, <laughs> just yeah. for me. I like the name. The, the Jacksonville Jungle. 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 Yeah. <laughs> what set are you using, A, B, or the jungle? The jungle. The jungle. <laughs> yes. I love it. But, um, you know, I'm uh, obviously honored. Thank you so much for having you on your platform. We actually had like a Joe Rogan style like conversation. Like yeah, It was two hours. I had no idea. Usually yeah. I keep my interviews at like one hour and I have a sense, right? I have a clock. And I have a sense. And I had no, I, I had both. The clock is right there and I was not <laughs> looking at it. We ended up talking for two whole hours yes. about your experiences, about what your partnership is like, you know, as brothers, as business partners. We, talk, we talked about everything. So yeah. everybody needs to go check out that episode in particular. Absolutely. We're going to put know. the links whenever it's available right below. You know, we're in the process of still picking a name. That's what uh, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, that's if my you biggest problem right now. names, ideas name for ideas. Ina's new podcast, make sure you yes. let her know. Send her a message. Please. Go to her, go to her profile, <laughs> connect with her, let her tell you what the show is all about and then yeah. give her ideas. Yeah. We yeah, pitched yeah. her once, but you know, she's a hard pitch. She was like, eh, that's not good enough. <laughs> yes. But I was nicer about it. I, I was just like, hmm. That, yeah, she's like, a, uh, I hate it. That's, <laughs> that's a good idea. Let's uh, move yeah. on. You let us down easy. It's all good. It's all uh, good. Absolutely. I was nice about it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, we did talk a lot also about content and stuff. And, you know, we, we might put a, a section of that at the end of this episode because it was so good. Thank it you for the so wonderful questions. And it was so good. You know, mm -hmm. and you guys were awesome about it. Cause I And I was just sharing this with Fonsi that we had different camera angles going. So when Fonsi got on a roll <laughs> and he really got like got that microphone, it was like mic drop moment after mic drop moment. I kept being very conscious of the camera because I'm like, this is a perfect reel because everybody <laughs> needs to hear. So I'm like, like uncrossing my legs so that my legs are not in the shot and like <laughs> removing myself. I'm like, let's make sure we're getting this. Are we catching this? So much gold, that, so that, much gold. You guys really uh, went you. there with me. That's a that's a hug the mic moment. Like we have that yes. hashtag hug the mic. Fonsi likes yeah. to do that sometimes. You know. Well, I appreciate that, Ina, but 
this is all about you right now and content is profit. So yeah. I'm going to put the spotlight on you. Okay. And we talked about, we want to discuss, you know, we want to hear about why changing, right? Because you already have a podcast about 270 episodes, 270 episodes already published. That's quite a lot. But now you're doing this new one, right? You're doing kind of like a little celebrity tour. You just were down in Miami recording live with That's some right. pretty big players. Then you came to Jacksonville, recorded live here at the studio with some other big players, and then you recorded with us. <laughs> <laughs> some big players yeah. and, and you. That, and then us. That's and the we go for hosting. <laughs> we're like, I guess we we'll had to sneak up yeah. in there. <laughs> but I'm curious, right? Like, why are you changing? You have the Get More Clients podcast, but now something totally new. And we've actually discussed in the podcast quite a few hundred episodes ago <laughs> is it good to pivot right like when is a good time to pivot right is it is it good does it feel like quitting something that you have been doing before so i'm pretty curious on what you got going on here um before we get to there you kind of need to understand my context okay because i am not a new podcaster i don't actually just have 270 episodes under my belt this is actually my fourth podcast wow. to date and I have pivoted other podcasts so technically this is like my seventh podcast that I've ever actually like started with like a new message and wow. new everything so I have experience starting something and then realizing you know what I want to go in a different direction and so I went through all of that pain yeah. already multiple times before where I'm like wait a minute this is where I've been pouring my all my blood, sweat, and tears yeah. into. So should I change this? It all started my very first podcast. I started podcasting in 2012. So I've been a podcaster for over a decade, right? Mm -hmm. Like m most people don't even know that podcasts are yeah. old, like a decade old, right? Um, in my first podcast, I was interviewing local entrepreneurs for no reason. I didn't have a business, right? I was yeah. just... I, um, I went to school for computer science. So anything technical has always just, I've just been drawn to because mm. it comes easy to me. Yeah. And I wanted to figure out this whole podcasting thing. So I started a podcast and I hosted it myself on WordPress. I, it wasn't on LinkedIn, it was anywhere. I just, because if anybody knows anything about podcasting, a podcast is nothing but an RSS feed. And you know what an RSS feed is? It's a blog. That's all an RSS feed is. It's a blog. Wow. So it all, you can actually start a blog of audio files on WordPress. You just need the right plugin. So you actually don't need Libsyn. Sorry, guys. You don't, <laughs> <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need any of those platforms. You can actually host it yourself. I don't recommend it. I'm not actually yeah, saying no. that people should do that. I don't host it myself anymore. Yeah. But when I started, I wanted to give this a try, and I didn't want to pay anybody. I didn't yeah. want to spend any money on this. I didn't have a business. So for no reason at all, I just started, I, I thought to myself, if I interview other people, then they can share about the podcast and then people will find me and then people will fall in love with me and I'll be famous and then I can quit my job and live my life like it's a paid vacation, right? Like that was the goal. That didn't really happen, right? So yeah. I would interview people. I had like 42 episodes on that podcast and then I got burnt out from the editing which is why you guys exist. Because <laughs> I don't think any podcaster should be editing their stuff. It was, for a one hour episode, it would take yeah. me at least three hours to edit each episode. Mm. And, and I'm savvy. I wasn't learning this for the first time, yeah. right? And I just couldn't take it. So that's when I stopped that one. So anyway, I'm not gonna tell you a story of every single one. I just want you to to hear from me yeah. that I have started podcasts That Fancy didn't do his research. That, <laughs> that, that Fancy yeah. didn't know what he was okay. talking about. Great. So, <laughs> That this is not this is not my first rodeo. Yeah, so yeah. the times before when I have pivoted, I actually had a podcast before called Corporate Trailblazers. But it sounds like people who are in corporate who want to like get for the go for the corner office. When that's really, literally what I just. That's about. literally yeah. what it sounds mm -hmm. like. But that's not what I meant for it to be. I I thought it was hey people who are in corporate mm -hmm. who want to step out of corporate and do their own thing. So when mm -hmm. I realized that there was a little bit of dissonance with the name. I actually waited until episode 50. I like my round numbers. I, I'm, a, I'm a stickler for like <laughs> episode numbers making sense. So yeah. I waited until episode 50. I made the decision at like episode 41. And then I teased it that I'm going to change the name of the podcast over a few mm. episodes. And then on episode 50, I changed it to 
trailblazing out of corporate life. Uh, so that made a little bit more sense. Now you know what that means, right? Yeah, I so am. I started to kind of realize that through that process of pivoting that people are not paying as much attention as you think, right? Like I could have said to myself, I already have 50 episodes on this podcast where I've been creating a brand. By that time I had a business. Yeah. I had an entire group, Facebook group of the same name, Corporate yeah. Trailblazers. So changing it had some quote unquote risk. Not quite. I didn't have a million followers. I wasn't making $5 million in my business. Yeah. Who cares? What matters is that I needed to get to a point of more clarity with my message. So I can't sacrifice clarity just because I'm afraid of what the current people are going to think. Once I discovered that, I had no problem. So good. I finished 100 episodes on that podcast, and then I stopped it because I said, you know what, I actually want to speak to a completely not completely different audience, but like no more side hustlers, more like the people who are really in business, right? No more corporate, full hustlers. just full hustlers, not side yeah. hustlers, just a full hustlers. And I changed my brand to a different name. And then I realized, okay, that needs to be a little bit clearer and clearer and clearer. So yeah. that's why I'm starting again, not starting again. I'm going to evolving it. I'm evolving it yeah. for the sake of clarity so good and to, f to chase the dream that I have for the dreams that I have for the podcast. And I yeah. can't do it in the current brand. And uh, I felt like really inspired when you shared kind of like what the plan is for this one, because, you know, you, you recently read a book, right? The 10x is better than 2x. Yeah. And uh, like you said, like you read the introduction and you have to stop because if not, you're going to have to like f go fully commit. And I, th I stopped in the introduction because I'm like, <gasps> if I continue this, it's going to set me on like this whole path yeah. that, you know, today I cannot do <laughs> today. Right. But oh um, it, like, but you know, you, it, it completely changed what you want to do in a, in a sense. And you're like, yeah, I'm traveling to Miami. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to Jacksonville. And you're actually traveling to different locations and renting studios and, and bringing, elevating these relationships that you have. Yeah. And I think it's like super encouraging. And I admire you to like take that chance on you, on your business, on your relationships. Because it's not easy to do, right? Like today, obviously, you know, we're in this industry where, from the phone, you can communicate with anybody, right? Like, we're just talking about our families kind of starting a podcast, and our dad records on his phone, right? Like, his own thing. Super accessible. And uh, we're always talking about these, like, indicators on, like, you know, authority building things that you can do and, you know, quality of the message over quality of production 100% of the time. But there's this thing visually that you can do to elevate that authority, right? And I think, like, you're playing at the highest level by doing this and investing in in this mm -hmm. and when a lot of people are seeing it maybe as an expense you're seeing it as like this incredible investment that is gonna pay off like a hundred times and that is something that i now that you said it that way i'm like that's actually what i talk about all the time like so i am not just a podcaster i am a business coach and i'm a business coach for coaches with small audiences because i've always had a small audience myself i don't know what it's like to have a hundred thousand followers and to just say I'm putting this offer out there and then make, yeah. you know, six F figures. Fonzie's Fon right OnlyFans knows that. But yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so small for small audiences, this is stuff yeah. that, I, that I talk about all the time. The key to monetizing a small audience is to, yes, you need to have a good offer, but you got to be able to build your authority. And what does that mean? It has nothing to do with the number of followers. People have to immediately, as soon as they look at you within three seconds, they have to decide whether you are worth their time, whether you are legit. So elevating your authority is the name of the game in making money with a small audience. So now that you drew that parallel, I'm like, that well, that makes perfect sense with, with what I'm doing. I have a small audience. I have, last time I checked, like 2,800 followers on Instagram barely a thousand subscribers to my email list right so i i know what it's and i have a six-figure business like literally like this is where yes. it comes from so nice. doing the thing in person doing the podcast in person came from that book from the 10x book everybody used to go like you need to create an affiliate link and put it below yeah so that everybody can get that book <laughs> right below but i'm telling you within the introduction your, your brain just goes in overdrive like I am not playing big enough. Even if you thought you were playing big before, like you're not doing enough. Yeah. So this idea of 
doing the podcast in person. Number one, elevates your authority like nothing else. If you're looking at reels and if you're scrolling and you're stopping at interviews that are in person, there's a reason for that. So yeah. as soon as that idea came into my mind, I couldn't not do it. So I called up the influencer that I was scheduled to interview the following week. And I had two choices. I could have just gone through with the interview on Zoom, like I have been for the past yeah. however many years, or I could cancel that interview and tell him, let's do this in person. Now that influencer happened to live in Miami. So I canceled. I started an email saying, I'm not going to do the interview with you. But if you want to do it in person, like, let me know. And he replied immediately. Yes, that sounds great. I'm like, yeah. now I have to go to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm going to Miami. And he was telling me yeah. like, when do you, when do you want to do this? And I'm like, First week, first week of June, I'm here thinking before the kids get out of school, right? Before the summer. Yeah. End of, like, beginning of June. And he's like, I'm going to be out in Philadelphia. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm like, last week of May? And he's like, yes, that works. I'm like, holy crap. I have, go to I have like, <laughs> three weeks to piece this together. And yeah. I was very fortunate that incredible entrepreneurs said yes to me interviewing them yesterday. Uh, two days ago, I was in Miami with Susie Moore, who lives right here in Miami, Kate Northrup, who lives in Miami, Kevin Schmidlin, Schmidlin from the Grow the Show podcast. Um, yesterday, here in Jacksonville, I got to interview Rachel Luna, who's another huge influencer in the coaching community. And you guys yeah. got to meet her. She came yeah. here to the she came here to the studio and she was checking it out. She's like, give me your information. We'll do the, her show here. Yeah, Maybe we all. can do something, <laughs> right? So this is a thing. And I, now that I did it, tactically speaking, I am keeping track of the budget. I had no idea how much this was going to cost. I still have, have no idea until I get home yeah. and I tally. Then now I know how much this is. I have another yeah. date now in Louisville, Kentucky in September. So I'm like, okay, so we're starting to add dates to the tour. I'm starting to add people to, I have an entire notion list of names of cities and people that I want to interview in each city. Nice. And every time that somebody has been reaching out to me because they like what I'm doing online, if they're the right candidate, I send them a message saying, so good. please tell me where you live because I want to add your name to your city list. So that list is growing and it's so blowing cool. my mind. And next step is doing this in Boston because that's where I'm from. That's where I am. Because so, I can't leave yeah. my family for a week every month. So I need to get this started in Boston as well. So yeah. that's what's happening right now. So I love it. So amazing. I really, I think there's a lot of value on the status part of, you know, the play. 100% I agree. Like we talked about it on your show, right? People are like, oh, if I'm ju if just, I just have a podcast and put the clips out there, people are gonna stop and watch it. No, unless you are somebody pretty big. But a factor is if they see that you're in person, that already is elevating the perception, right? And people are going to be like, mm, okay, let me give it a chance. Let me give this person a chance. Now, I'm cu pretty curious on why not keep the same, get more clients and do it in person, right? And why change it to something totally new? That's a great question. Because I actually, <laughs> I was going live last night. I was on a high from everything that has happened in the past 48 hours. So it was 11.30 at night and I turned on Instagram Live and I just started sharing with everybody, this is what just happened and this is why. And I was telling them that, so I'm about to change the name of my podcast and I don't know what the new name is going to be, but this is gonna happen soon because I just recorded six interviews and I'm not sitting on these. These are gonna go live soon. I need to figure out the name and this is happening. And when I said that, one of my longtime followers was there live with me. And she said, again? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yes, again. Because actually, I just renamed the podcast like last October, maybe in the past six yeah, months. Yeah. And the like every time that I have made a change has been for a very strategic reason. Mm. My last reason to change the podcast name to what it is now, Get Clients First, is because that is the name of my program. So mm. what I do is I teach people, I teach specifically coaches and solopreneurs how to get clients within the first 30 days with an offer that they can validate and take to six figures from there without launching and without ads. 
That's what I teach. That's what I know how yeah. to do is how to monetize your small audience. We can do that now without a big audience, without ads, without anything. So Get Clients First is the name of the program. So having a podcast that is the same name as the program, it was just a slam dunk. Yeah. It's like, great, I'm going to be talking about the things that I want to talk about, interviewing big coaches about their yeah. marketing strategies. And then... I'm telling you, that 10x book just <laughs> scrambles yeah. your brain. Um, I read the 10x book, and the the big, huge 10x vision came to my mind that I am not here just to talk to coaches about getting their next client. I am here, like here on earth, to show people, to show everybody that if you have a vision, you can make it happen. It's, it's the exact yeah. same thing that I just told you about, like how we made these in-person things happen. Yeah. There is a whole life philosophy that informed that trajectory, yeah. right? There is a whole way to be, a whole way to look at life mm. in a way that nothing is impossible and everything is available to me. And that kind of philosophy of life can be applied to everything, yeah. not just to business, not just to marketing, not just to clients. I, I feel like there's a much bigger message there. And if I'm going to expand that message, I can't do it in the confines of, let me talk to you about getting your next client, right? So my offers are not going to change. I still want to teach you how to get your next client so you can start to get the foot into entrepreneurship. But when it comes to my message, the, the vision became so big that it didn't fit inside the get clients first box anymore. And I had to let go of that initial thought that, wow, this is a slam dunk, very strategic uh, answer, like this is what I should be doing. I had to let go of that in favor of what really the larger vision is. So I don't mourn the loss of get clients yeah. first. The get clients first podcast has been amazing. It didn't start out being called Get yeah. Clients First. It was called no. the global phenomenon first because I had that big vision before and then I kind of narrowed it down and now we're going yeah. back out, right? So good. So that's, that is why we're not sticking with the same brand. My offerings are the same. I'm still a business coach. I'm a visionary partner, but the big vision has to get out there and we need to make it accessible to the masses. Yeah. Innovation. Innovation. <laughs> hey. So we've been playing. We've been playing with my name Ina as part of the name. Yep. But I'm telling you, I've been trying because when I had an AOL Instant Messenger account back in the year 2001, I created a screen name called Ina Nutshell, and that stuck with me. A friend of mine was the one because we were trying to. We did this exact same exercise 25 yeah. years ago, <laughs> and he came up with. In a nutshell, I'm like, that is so cute. And that ended up being the name of my business. Like my yeah. LLC name is Ina Nutshell. Yeah. Uh, so somebody was like, oh, why can't that be the name of the podcast? I'm like, well, that was the name of my first podcast. <laughs> that was Ina <laughs> Nutshell podcast, That's the so name weird. of the podcast. But it doesn't quite resonate. So we've been playing with the idea of using Ina in the name and we don't know. So Ina Vision. Yeah. So if you have any suggestions, please send Ina uh, a send DM. Them. Send us a DM. We'll, we'll get to her. Yeah. Um, but that's super inspired about what you're doing. I cannot wait to see the results of this. They're going to be incredible, you know, from very awesome quality experiences with like the people that you love and admire all the way to like the message that you're going to be putting out there because mm -hmm. when you elevate the process like the way that you're doing it you're going to be connecting with people that are you know creating like real value yeah. and uh attention is going to follow that quality of the message right so yeah. i think this is one of those moments where quality of the message goes hand in hand with the production aspect and uh, I'm very excited to see. I mean, we, I was just telling you at lunch that you inspired, you know, that the bigger vision. And we're like, what are we doing? We're sharing kind of like what that 10x looks like for us, right? Yeah. Or at least to me, because Fonsi was there a little later. <laughs> so Fonsi was late. I think that's a message. I was here. doing work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 it was, it was, it was. We escaped. We were too hungry. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so what I, what I really want to do now is I want to... Wait, wait, wait. Before you announce that real quick. Um, there's a concept that we've talked, actually, we haven't talked about it in a while, but it's kind of like content hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of talks a little bit about that status, right? Like when you meet people and they're like, oh yeah, I'm a content creator or, you know, I'm an expert on something and I just create reels. You're like, oh, okay, cool. But if somebody comes to you and they tell you, I have a podcast, oh, that's a little bit higher up in the 
content hierarchy, right? And then I if, travel around the world if, doing my podcast. If they tell you, wait, you just sent me across the world. <laughs> there you Why go. Not? I'm, going, Why not? I'm going to Jacksonville and Louisville, Kentucky, right now. <laughs> like, and now you just sent me across the world. It's Why not? okay. It's okay, right? But <laughs> the, po- the point. We know people in Australia. Just saying that they would love to have you. Oh, I have an Australian. I have an Australian. Yeah, yeah. I totally have an Australian. Yeah. List. we got you. So <laughs> you know, the concept is there is medium mediums that bring more status right like writing a book writing a book is challenging right if you do the thinking and don't write it with chat gpt but you right. know watching us episodes so you know what i'm talking about but um i feel like in-person podcasting because now it is fairly simple to start a podcast and say oh i'm just gonna jump on zoom and do my interviews in zoom right like the technology allows it which is amazing right it's a great advantage but there's something special about being there in person right like people know that that takes resources effort right and not everybody's willing to do something in person is way more risky right is it but at the same time it's way more rewarding at the same time so i challenge you right now listening or watching this what is your content hierarchy right like what are you doing to establish that status are you just you know, doing reels? Are you just dancing? Nothing wrong with that if that's what you like. But are you maybe taking a bigger risk? And are you doing in-person interviews to separate yourself from everybody else? I think that's that's great. I'm going to tell you the, the two things that matter most in that setup to make it look really authoritative. Number one is the camera quality, right? The fact that these things are not being recorded on phones, yeah. right? These are coming from... Uh, DSLR Mm -hmm. cameras that blur out the background, right? Like, that is number one. Number two, want to hear what it is? A hair and makeup team. (laughs) (laughs) Because people can tell. Clearly, you can tell. People people (laughs) can tell that as a a woman, that there was a team in place to make this happen, people notice that. So, and I think you said exactly a word. I'm here trying to like deconstruct why does in person look yeah. higher quality than that? It's like yes, the camera. Number two, hair and makeup, right? Yeah. Um, but like people notice those things because who is going to do it? Is that person must have resources? Mm-hmm. And if that person has resources, how come I haven't heard about them before? Let me go click on that and see what else they have, right? Yeah. So it's a it's it's incredible why we don't know why in-person reels do better than just Zoom reels? And I've been trying to make Zoom reels happen, right? Like I have a video editor who has taken my interviews. I've done amazing interviews with incredible people over Zoom. And they just don't translate that authority on on a phone, right? So we'll see. I mean, we just literally just started. You guys were... uh, episode six of this podcast that I just started, Welcome right? To the Lucky number right? six, baby. <laughs> Lucky number six. And I haven't put this out there yet, but I'm very, very curious to know like what happens with it. I will let yeah. you know. It's gonna I'm be excited. so good. I can't wait. Also you get to build way more rapport with the guests your guests, right? That you're having on the show. You don't even know you build incredible oh. relationships. They're probably way more excited to promote your show when it comes out as well. Because it's a whole different experience. And they already have because when we met they posted to their stories that they were here with me it has already yeah. happened yeah that is insane that people like i, I just vi- finished listening to susie moore's book susie moore has a book called let it be easy and i promised myself that if i was going to be interviewing these big shots i was going to read their books because many years ago I was watching Conan O'Brien on The Late Show and he was interviewing an author and he was talking to him about his book. And I'm like, and I'm looking at this, I'm like, so his job is to read somebody's book and then interview them about it. Like, I want that job. I remember thinking this like to the point that it got imprinted in my brain. So when I set up these interviews, in fact, when I've been setting up like every interview, but I always like give myself a little bit more like slack. Yeah. So I'm like, well, who I am, I'm nobody. You know, even if I read the book, like what, what's like, what's the point? Like I, I just like really downplayed it. So when I set up these in-person interviews, I'm like, I am not letting this dream slip away. Yeah. I am going to read these books. So I had just been listening. I listened to the books. I listened to Susie Moore 
tell the entire 143 chapters of her book. Uh, and when I saw her come through the door, and she was like a ball of energy. She came with her hands open, like, come Amazing. give me a hug. I'm like, oh, yeah. total fangirl. I'm like, this is my life. I'm Conan O'Brien. This, <laughs> this is my life now. Yeah. I get to interview her. She gets to be a lovely person. We get to like talk to each other, right? And like, and she's sitting down. She's like, she's being super lovely. She knows that the guys are still finishing setting up and I'm just filling her in. I'm like, okay, just so you know, I am going to be asking you some personal questions. Nothing you haven't talked about before. Clearly, I got these things from your yeah. book, right? And she's like, oh yeah, I'm total open book. She was being totally nice about it. And I'm like, so I'm filling her in. And I'm like, okay, I think we're ready to get started. And she's, and she's like, you're the boss. You tell me where to be. That's where I'll go. She was so, so incredible. Cool. And like, so were everybody, everybody yeah, that yeah. I interviewed. Yeah. And so I guess just, just taking it back to like the connections that you're going to make that I'm going to be making with, in, in person with people. Like, I love the fact that I got to hang out with you guys. You know, like we hadn't seen each other for a couple of years. Couple of years, yeah. Right? Couple but of years. Yes. Yeah. Right? But it doesn't yeah. feel like it. Yeah. It feels like like we're always connected. But now we really are. We just had lunch together. We shared about our stories together and yeah. now, now we're here. So yeah, in person just so far it stands up to the hype. So Papa so is awesome. so much better than Zoom. Yeah. So I um now that we have a little more time. <laughs> um <laughs> I want to make the connection for people that maybe want to get to that point, right? Like you share your story on like, this is not the first podcast, right? Like this is, it's been a while. You have a business attached to it, right? You know, we get a lot of people walking into our studio and asking about how to start a podcast or they have- Or quite, asking to be the next Joe Rogan. Yeah, like, they're like, can you guys make us right, the next Joe um, Rogan? I'm like, perfect. Do you have 11 years to do this, right? Like right. to start there. Exactly. Um, but I think a lot of people come into the industry- or content creation in general with wrong expectations, right? Oh. Because what we're seeing is like the top 0.1% like of the creators, right? Most of them right. out there who we follow and we don't understand fully the journey. You know, we're sharing your show that I'm obsessed with like Kill Tony, like mm -hmm. this comedy show. They've been at it for 11 years. I'd never heard uh, of them before. You pointed it out last night. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of research also. I will say... If you, it's an awesome show, Tony, in case you listen to this, we love you, man. It's <laughs> awesome. Hi, Tony. But it's pretty raunchy. She, has a, she okay. has a link of the episode. It's, ra it's raunchy comedy. So okay. if, you, if you look at it, please don't judge us by that. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay. I will, I will not, Fonzie, I'm not going to judge you based on what I hear on Kill Tony. You can yeah. judge okay. me. I That's mean, fine. Because we, we like the show. Okay. <laughs> you know, we enjoy the show. I will not judge you. <laughs> it's a common show. It's, it's about, it's, anyways, besides the fact <laughs> that, that that's the type of show. Um, I've been doing a lot of research in a sense. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts where Tony is the guest. Okay. And I've been learning a lot, a lot about his story, right? And he talks about, you know, how he never got a, ch a shot in like Comedy Central despite like being a, a script writer uh, or a, a, a ghost writer for like roast shows and it's because of his type of content is very polarizing they didn't want to associate him with the main media and he basically said fuck all of them i'm gonna go create my own platform and that's why he did in his show and his first shows were with 17 people in the room right now they're selling out arenas for a live podcast yeah we, Our, try, we try to get tickets like six months in advance something like that for, they were all we're gonna go to austin and yeah, they were sold out. We couldn't sold find out. anything. And then um, they're about to perform in Madison Square Garden, right? And uh, and it's funny because in all these recent interviews that happened right after the um, Tom, Brady uh, Tom Brady's roast, wh which by the way, the story of him getting on that show was also one of those being proactive as fuck moments where it's like he how we call it table face table hashtag table face right cara tabla cara uh, tabla yeah. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> that's very funny. And that's one of the one. That's one of the traits that we've seen in a lot of people. It's like mm -hmm. they don't wait for the opportunities; they go chase them. Right? He basically talked to every single relationship that he had. Uh, Tom Ross, the, the main roast guy, he was a producer of the show. He believes in the guy. He introduced it to the director, but he called. He shot. He stood up and he's like, he showed the director. He's like, this is how it's gonna work when I do this. He's not going to be a set. He was meant to stay sitting down in a table, and they gave him two minutes. He stood up and walked onto stage roasting people, and it was about a five-minute set, which is a ton, and everybody loved it. So everybody now is like, wow, this Tony guy, brand new. No, he's been doing this thing for 11 years, so every single person there has been like, 
11 years of putting in the work, yeah. right? Yeah. So with you, right, same thing. Like you've been doing this for many years. Like when RSS feed, when you could just pull it, it was a blog, right, what, back then. And you're starting to do this. And I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to discover you right now. And they're going to be like, oh, where's this girl came from, right, come from, right? Like, and you've been doing your thing and you've been like, iterating on your message connecting uh, there's a business so based on all that rant that i just had um for people that are starting like their journey and something like this we're like man like that is an investment right i cannot maybe afford to go travel and do these things or oh, it's so far away like maybe i just don't do it it's too complicated many logistical things like what would be your advice to them don't don't start where where i am like i this is what did we say 12 years in the making yeah. don't start here yeah. i you need to start with whatever the next uncomfortable action is for you i have to actually talk to people who say like i want to get to a million dollars in my business and a million followers in a year what do i need to do i'm like i i'm not sure <laughs> like i don't think anybody could tell you how to do that because the people that you're seeing have that kind of success have been doing it for 15 years. The people that have huge audiences, and I've interviewed a lot of people in my podcast that have really big audiences, and without fail, they will all tell you, I was in the right place at the right time. I was talking about the right thing right when people needed it, right? Especially around the pandemic, where like yeah. TikTok just like took a turn like like yeah. business content on tiktok just sh like shot through the roof yeah, everybody was looking to get money online or do something online. because everybody that lost their job that saw their jobs in jeopardy was looking for something new and all of a sudden all of these creators have amazing platforms and amazing audiences and when you look at it and you ask them like but what did you do like what are the steps that i need to take to have the audience that you have they will tell you you need to be back in 2020 creating content the way that I was in August of 2020, yeah. right? Timing is very, very important. So it's like timing the market. There's no way they would have predicted it. They just happen to be in the right place at the right time. So how do you get yourself in the right place at the right time? You got to start with what you have now. So yeah. I love it when people have a big goal. Give me a big goal. Give me a big vision. I was, um, I don't, I don't remember the setting, but somebody asked what is, like if, if everybody, if somebody gave you permission to like do anything, right? Like if you, if you knew you couldn't fail, like what would that thing be that you want to do? And people went around the room and you could hear them saying, well, I would be a Hollywood actress, right? Like people really went all out. Like we were in a business setting. Yeah. Right? Nobody was talking about making a million dollars with their business. They're like, I would be a Hollywood actress. Oh, I would be Taylor Swift, right? Like people were really dreaming. And I'm like, well, if they're not going to be talking about business, I'm going to tell them what I really want. And I told them like, I would have my own talk show on TV, right? Like, Let's go. So right there, you can see that I am just making moves towards fulfilling my dreams. But I'm not, yeah. I, right now, I am not applying to be a, an MC in some TV show. Like that, That's not something I'm doing right now. Maybe it's something that six weeks from now, I'll be like, why am I not doing that and go and do it? But yeah. the reality is that I am setting myself up for success right now because if I do in six weeks, go and apply for a presenter job on TV, what do, they, what do I have to show for it? Right now, all I have is a bunch of Zoom calls. So they can see that, okay, I can interview people, but it's not the same as having camera presence. So yeah. what am I doing? I'm putting myself in a position to be in front of the camera, interviewing people with a full hair and makeup. Like you can see me looking like someone who's on TV interviewing somebody. I am just getting closer to that. Yeah. But for you to get to whatever dream you want to get to, if you want to be the next Joe Rogan, more power to you. It sounds like that's what Tony is doing. And you know where Tony started? By applying for jobs doing that, right? That's not working. Well, let me start my own platform. I promise you it wasn't a linear growth. Oh, zero. I promise you that there were trials, 
there were tribulations, there were times he wanted to quit, there were times when things were not working, and things just started working little by little. 11 years later, he, the man is finally on TV. Yeah. But at this point that he's finally on TV and people are talking about him is when he's selling out arenas, right? Like now yeah. he's like, he's an overnight right. success story. Right now he's like, it's a nice to have, I don't need it, right? And like everybody's like, yeah, we, we've seen you in the industry for so many years and like, we know what you're capable of, right? right. It's just created that moment. He's like, it's a nice thing to have and I like, you know. I, w them, I would just know? say, <laughs> If you want to be the next Joe Rogan, if you want to make a million dollars in your business, what is the next thing that will prepare you to cool. get there that is within your reach, right? This is something I was um, I was telling you, I went live at 11.30 last night just to tell people about everything that's happening. And I really stress the fact that there could have been an opportunity out there for somebody to say, hey, who would like to interview Kate Northrop in Miami, right? Who would like to do that? Come and apply for the opportunity and we'll raffle it out and you'll get to win. So there you are like applying for these opportunities, right? Yeah. Or you can just call up Kate Northrop and tell her, can I interview you in person around the corner from your house? No fuss, no muss. I'll be there. Uh, yeah. Here's all the information that you need. And create the opportunity for yourself. Now, I had no idea Kate Northrop was going to say yes. I had no <laughs> idea Susie Moore was going to say yes. I fully believed I am nobody. They're going to completely ignore the emails. Not only did not, they not ignore them, they replied. They both said yes. And then on the day of the interview, I had given them both my cell phone number. And I said, here you go in case you need anything, in case you get lost, in case you can't yeah. find the door, here you go. I had actually gotten my friend, my good friend, Marielle Silvet. She's another coach, she's in Puerto Rico. She came to Miami purely to help me escort guests into the studio so because cool. the studio in Miami was up a you know, uh, ninth yeah. floor, down a dark hallway, right? <laughs> I wanted people to feel safe. My friend Marielle was the one waiting Amazing. downstairs for them and escorting them in. So on that day that I gave everybody my cell phone number and Marielle's, I got a text message from both Kate Northrop and Susie Moore telling me, I'm on my way, I'm trying to find the door. Like, And I'm like, now I have the cell phone numbers yeah. of these people that I admire, yeah. people that, whose books I have read. Yeah. That opportunity did not exist before I decided a few weeks earlier that that's something I wanted to do. So. My advice to people, going back, I keep going back to the, like, okay. yeah, the yeah. advice to people who want to be the next year Rogan is to find out what is the next logical opportunity that is going to help you prepare for being the next year Rogan and just doing it and then not giving up on it and so then good. keep going with it. So good. I'm curious on whether you have a plan to continue developing those relationships because as we've talked many times, Right. For us, content is profit. The value of it is the relationship that we're creating with the guests and then obviously seeking to build an audience. But for us, the main value is that relationship. And in some ways, we've, you know, kind of like keep developing some of the relationships with some better than with others, of course, and some have fallen through the cracks and we've never talked to them again, right? Like we've done a lot of interviews too, so uh, it's a lot Talk of relationships to, to keep up with. <laughs> but uh, I'm curious, right? Because again, yeah. it's another level. What You build more rapport when you are in person with somebody, right? Um, so I'm curious, have you thought about that, about how are you going to keep developing these relationships? Because at the end of the day, is not just what you know, it's also who you know, and your network is also your net worth. And, you know, all these things that you can say, but there is value on having a valuable network. There's something that I believe, and that you have seen me do already without really knowing. And that is that I like to create genuine connections with people. If I interview somebody and I'm not feeling that vibe, I, I am very, very free to just let it go. But for people that I have a good vibe with, I really make an effort for them to know that, that this is a real connection that we have, yeah. right? That this is not superficial. And we do that in the moment. We don't do that outside of the room. We don't do that with a follow-up gift, which I do have, <laughs> right? 
Uh, we don't do it that way. Not an Arsenal jersey, Fonzie. Just don't get excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't. We don't do it that way. We do it in the room, just yeah. by you look at them in the eye, you appreciate them for being there, you show your humility, right? You, I I told them both, I did not know you were going to say yes because I, I admire you. I read your book. Congratulations on all your success. Like yeah. they they need to know that that this means something to me, and they feel it. Okay, and it, it puts them in a position of receiving that appreciation. And I, I was talking to Kate Northrop, and I was telling her, you know, I'm planning on doing this in Boston. She and she is, she used to live in Maine before she moved to Miami. She's like, do you know so and so in Boston? I'm like, no. Contact her. Go and go and tell her that you want to interview her in Boston. And, I, and I'm like, I told her, yeah, I meet more people from Canada and Australia in the coaching world than I do from Boston. I don't know a lot of people in Boston. Yeah. And she's like, I have all the New England connections. I'll introduce you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I plan on following up on that. I don't. Ex- I don't expect her to do anything for me. Mm-hmm. Right. I really believe that because we have this connection now. And because we're in the same field, in the same industry, we are going to run into each other again. Um, So what I meant when I said that you guys have already seen me do this is that you guys and me, we connected when we first met, right? Nobody could tell you after we met, like I went away, we don't talk all the time, right? Like nobody could have told you that, uh, like anything about me because you guys now know me. Mm -hmm. Two years later, we talk to each other like like we've known each other all yeah. our lives. Yeah. And that is just by creating a genuine connection on the spot, you know? That is the most valuable thing to me. I may not speak to or see Susie Moore or Kate Northrop for the next three years, but it won't matter because next time that I see them, you bet they're going to remember me. You bet we're going to be hugging each other because yeah. the connection has already been made. But you bet that I'm going to be sending them a follow-up gift that is extremely thoughtful. Uh, my only requirement to creating a gift for my guests is, and my cousin, shout out to Daniela. She's in Chile and she does it. She's a business development leader and she creates gifts, like curates gifts for like CEOs and oh, stuff wow. like that. Cool. So she helped me come up with a gift for my guests. Oh, awesome. And she came up with the perfect one because I told her my only requirement is that it can't be something that when I send it to them, they will look at it, say that's nice and throw it in the trash. So you bet that I am very excited to send them that that's gift, cool. something that they get to keep, something I get to cherish and yeah. remember me by, right? It, yeah. And I promise you that thing is not going to have my logo in it. Yeah. Because yeah. who cares? Nobody wants more swag. So <laughs> so anyway, that's, so awesome. that's what I think of relationships. You yeah. make them on the spot and like then it's just unbreakable. Perfect. The, you know, I'm, again, super grateful that you made us part of this experience. Mm-hmm. I do have to wrap up because I got to go get the kids. Uh, <laughs> big one. You guys can keep talking if you want. But, you know, Alex mentioned this one day, I think. It's, like, the weight of, the, like, the event, right? And, like, we just spent, like, two days with you on these interviews and this. And in Miami, same thing. For some reason, our mind will remember this as if it was, like, yesterday. Yeah. Even if it's a long period of time. Even if we don't talk to each other for, like, the next year, still going to be a memorable event. And we're just going to pick up where we left off, right? Right. Which I'm not saying we're not going to talk for the next year, right? But, you know, we'll, we will. We have to send you these files. Right? <laughs> um, but that's important, right? Like those memories and those experiences. That's why when we go to events and then we see each other the next year again, the, the same yeah. conference is like, oh, yeah. there People it is. People might not remember exactly what you tell them, but they will remember how you made them feel. feel yeah. I heard that. So um, as we wrap up, Fancy, is there anything you want to add? No, just thank you. Is fantastic having you here in Jacksonville. Thank so. you guys. No, thank you so much for setting up the really nice set. I'm serious. If anybody needs a studio in Jacksonville, you guys <laughs> gotta hit up the Biz Bros. They're setting up a really, really nice space for for you to do in person interviews here. So I'm excited to like talk you guys up and oh, bring thank more people you. here. Thank Send you, thank you some you. commissions. Uh, That's good. That's yeah, good. Is there any last thoughts on your side? I just want to say that. Whoever is listening right now, whatever you take away from this is not that Ina is so cool and she's doing all these things, which you're very welcome it's true. to it's think. Definitely true. You're very welcome to think that. But what's really more important is what are you going to do about it? 
because now that we've injected this 10x mentality into you, like you really got to start thinking that way. Yeah. So no more holding back and waiting for permission, waiting for somebody to give you an opportunity. It's time for you to kind of step up and see what happens when you throw your hat in the ring. And not just that, actually go and make it happen. Send out the emails, make the invitations, whatever that means. Start the podcast. Contact the Biz Bros. You've been thinking about contacting the Biz Bros forever mm -hmm. to help you produce your podcast. And this is your call to action to go and actually do it so that the podcast can start so you can become the next Joe Rogan sooner rather than later. But it all starts by taking that first step. So that's what I have for the world. Well said. Thank you, Ina. In a minute. <laughs> In a minute. Thank you for having me. In a podcast. In a podcast. <laughs> With that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at Liz Bros Co. That is Ryan Ina here. Help you move one step closer towards your goal. Please don't forget to share this and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.